What's up, everybody? It's Mac, and we're back here at the factory for Fish Scale Fridays. We got my man JT in the building. Yes, yes. Introduce yourself, tell people a little bit about yourself. What's you are, and all that stuff. It's your boy JT, uh, JT Running Man. Um, you know, uh, co owner and general manager of the factory LTD. Um, you know, a big part of the Favor by Rome movement. Um, you know, I've been making music out here for a long time as well um, so I kind of got a lot of stuff going on a lot of people know me for a lot of different things but I feel like uh, yeah I'm born and raised in Denver I'm from the north side you already know what it is so yeah uh, uh, um, so how did, how did you first get the the nickname Running Man I, I know where JT uh, yeah. from, uh, what did Running Man where did that come so I actually came when I was in high school so I used to just go by JT I used to make music in high school I used to just go by JT and then, uh, but in high school, when I was in high school, it was like in, from 2009 to 2012. And so, <clears throat> niggas was wearing Jordans like crazy, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was like, all the retros were dropping and niggas were going crazy, lining up outside the shoe stores and shit. It's like when Sneakerhead, it was fun to be a Sneakerhead kind of, but I wasn't on any of that. I was like, I used to wear a lot of my dad's shoes and shit and I would get, so I would basically get a lot of running shoes. And I remember I was smoking one day on my lunch break with my nigga uh, Cornelius. Shout out my nigga Cornelius, the gym guy. And he was just commenting on the fact that I always have running shoes on. He's like, man, you the running man. You got your running shoes on, you the running man. And I kind of just do that because I had to figure out a way to separate myself just by having the name JT. So I was like, JT, the running man. And they kind of took off from there. Stuff, stuff. Do you think you kind of suck? Do people still still call you Running Man? Or is it, you know, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, most people know me. Yeah, they a lot of people call me Running Man still. Yeah, it's like a thing now. I got my own emoji. That's so. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the that's the. Okay, so when did you first decide to start like putting that on clothes? I see you got like the polos and uh, the yeah. and things like that. So clothes isn't like a. It's not like a super big thing for me. It's more like a like a merchandise thing for just you know for when I'm making music. But the reason that I, when I started getting into that was when I basically had access to everything that we have here to manufacture clothes. And I figured, you know what I mean? If I'm making merch for everybody else, I might as well make some stuff for myself too. And so, uh, but that's why my designs haven't been super like detailed or not as much thought out because I don't really consider myself like a clothing designer or, or like, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm not really big on making merch I guess I know that some people want it but it's not like my main priority so I kind of just do it in spurts when I when I kind of feel like it but um, yeah the, the reason I got started with it is because I had access to all the manufacturing and right. the shipment to get it done so it's kind of like why not do it exactly right, right. Yeah. Sure. yeah so yeah, exactly. it's always good to have merch and stuff exactly yeah I always have something especially people want to have it I have cousins in uh, other parts of the other states like I have a lot of cousins in Mississippi and Dallas and stuff like that so uh, I send stuff out to them too as well so that's that was where it's at right so, okay okay so uh, like as you were just saying you're, you're really very multi-talented um, into a lot of different things do you think that uh what do you think people know you the most for is it you know being JT running man the rapper being the plug on the clothes or is it being like the interviewer or um, things like that I feel like <clears throat> And maybe it kind of depends on how long you've known me, because I feel like people that have known me since I was like in high school will probably cause, like remember me for being a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like JT the rapper. I feel like right now um, I'm like the close guy. So I feel like when you think about music, especially in Denver, Colorado, right now, I wouldn't say it's like oversaturated, but I think that there's a lot of different artists that come to mind when we think of like. Well, like who's a rapper in Denver? I would be the first person to come up like in somebody's head, or maybe not all the time at least. But I feel like when you think of like what well, I need to get some clothes made, or I need to get some merch done, or something like that, I feel like I'm the first person that people generally think about. So I would say right now, a lot of people know me for, and then there's a lot of random people who know me just from doing that Marty and Four interview. Right. So there's a lot of people. I said I'll be out places, and you know, if I just walk up to me and be like, hey, you, "Did you do that interview?" Like, yeah, that was me. So there's a lot of people who know me for that, but I feel like the most, for the most part, people right now know me uh, for manufacturing clothes. There's not a lot of manufacturers out there right now. There's a lot of clothing lines, 
a lot of rappers, but I don't feel like there's a lot of people in my position uh, who couldn't manufacture books. Right. I feel like that's a big part of why I'm so popular. And then a lot of people probably who know me now have realized that I'm kind of popular and don't know why, and I think that would all come from me making music. You know, that's kind of how I got, kind of got so, uh, it was so easy for me to find clients for, for manufacturing because I was already pretty popular. Actually, yeah. Actually. Um, so what what made you want to start doing the interviews on the uh, favorite page and things uh, like that? How did people come in and do that? We kind of just started doing that. We so we had done uh, interviews a long time before we did. We had the favorite by Rome store. Um, Fidel, my partner, had uh, his own like podcast that he was doing called the Bodelli Show, and that was like a that was a long time ago. And so we used to do podcasts and interviews like that, but I wasn't really a big part of it. But I could see that Fidel was kind of struggling with the interviews sometimes because he's not as much of a, you know, like a personality, I guess. So it wasn't as easy for him to talk. And so I was like, oh man, you know, you should let me take over some of these interviews. And then we did one interview with a friend of mine who passed away, THC, rest in peace. Uh, we did an interview with him and that was the first one that I kind of led. And that was at the top of some smoke shop. And then when we had, uh, when we finally got the favor by Rome store, it was kind of like we had more um, room to do things. We had more creative control over things. Uh, I linked up with Chris from Banana Clip, and then that's kind of, I mean, it was pretty much mine and his project, and we kind of came together and we're like, okay, you know, let's shine some light on, you know, people that we think deserve a little bit more credit in the city, you know what I mean? And then we ended up being really good at it. And we were doing it for a while, but then <clears throat> we kind of shifted our focus into more of um, him becoming a platform. And then us, since we already had the clothing store, we wanted to kind of transition more into the manufacturing side of clothing. So then with that, it was just too much to try to keep all that stuff going on and try to do our own media outlet at the same time. Especially when there was other media outlets that were out here that were already doing a good enough job we felt like we could kind of step away from that and let them take over and then we would uh, kind of steer and stay on and kind of do so I'm just noticing where things are going. Exactly, yeah, kind of seeing where we can make the most profit on our end too, like what's the most lucrative for us and uh, how we can use our resources to the best of our ability. And so after like some deliberation and deciding everything, we figured that this was the best course. So we kind of took away from it. but. I think that uh, there might be some more, like obviously with the Marty and Four interview and stuff like that, like if something comes up and we feel like it's something that we want to cover, we'll take the time out of it to, uh, to make that happen. But other than that, we're kind of just trying to stick to what, we're doing, what we do best. Sure, you know, sure. so. did, did you think, did you know or did you think that that Marty and Four interview would go so viral? I had a pretty good idea that it was going to be pretty popular just given the situation and everything and what was going on with it. And the fact that uh, like people in Denver, Colorado knew who Marty was, but not a lot of people like nationally or like anybody who kind of was had their eyes on the situation, not, nobody really knew who Marty was. And I knew that people wanted to hear, you know, there's two sides to every story. So I knew that people would want to hear it and we were lucky enough to have access to it. And so uh, we did, I didn't think it was going to go as crazy as it did as soon as it did, but I did have a, I did have a pretty good feeling that it would, I, my, my estimation was that we would get like at least 30,000 views right away just from people who get it, but it kind of made skyrocketing past that, so it was pretty cool, yeah. yeah I remember so I, I saw it get posted on like some other page, that was yeah. like a big page, and I was just like, Twitter was what? posted, there was all kinds of people, it got like over a million views on TikTok, and it was like, a, it was pretty crazy, it went pretty viral, but that's good. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so, so what, um, what struggles would you say come with like being a clothing manufacturer? And uh, sure. I mean, you guys do most of the uh, merchandise in the city. You yeah, know, like the biggest one out here. So, what would you say comes with uh, some of the struggles that come with it? And what is your favorite part? Of it? Um, so I mean, the struggles. There's some. There's a lot of struggles, obviously, that come with it, and that would be for. I feel like anybody who is in a, a position where they are in a manufacturing company they would probably deal with those same struggles, you know what I mean? There's things that aren't getting shipped in time, uh, machines are going down, time, you know, things that are always out of our control that are always coming up that we have to try to 
uh, compensate for it, no matter what. Um, as far as <clears throat> being like a popular printer, I don't think there's really, I guess the biggest struggle would be um, explaining the screen print process to somebody who's never done it before and trying to, because I feel like people, when they um, first decide to make merchandise or decide to make clothes, they don't exactly know how much it's gonna cost to get things started. And they might see their friends doing it and not realize that their friends had spent that amount of money to get things started. And so they'll come and they'll think that they can get all this stuff for this amount of, or this amount of money. And it it's, doesn't always line up. But a good thing about what we do is we usually work with people and try to build something that um, is effective for us and then also makes the customer happy. And that would tie into what I would think would be the best part of it. I have, I think it's the coolest thing, like when I go out in the city or go out anywhere, and, like there's not a day that I go somewhere and don't see somebody wearing something that I've printed, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's cool to see that these other people are, uh, you know, pushing their stuff and it's going around and there's people in the city that are actually wearing it. There's people who have made careers off of this stuff, you know what I mean? So it's also cool to see people grow like from the first time that we met them to where they're at now, you know what I mean? So it's cool to see. And I think that we're also a big inspiration for a lot of people um, in the city, especially people who are starting their own businesses and things like that. Uh, sometimes people don't know exactly what it takes or how hard it is or if it's even possible. And I feel like when people come and see us, that they realize like, oh, it is possible. I can do this. I can make this amount of money by myself and not have to work for somebody else. And that's, a, that's like the coolest thing to me, I think, is helping people get away from their nine to fives and make extra money in a legal way, you know, like myself. So, so there's plenty of ways to make money illegally, but we're trying to do it the right way. So, right, for sure. You know, definitely a positive question. Exactly, exactly. Um, okay. so, so, what would you say is next for you? Like, what would you in the store? Um, as far as, uh, so, like, with music, I haven't been doing too much music stuff recently, but I'm thinking about um, maybe doing like a little EP or something this year, so I might drop some music this year with a couple of visuals. Uh, other than that, as far as the manufacturing thing goes, we're going to be, uh, we're kind of in a transition spot right now where we're uh, starting to take on more um, commercial orders, so we're like expanding, um, we're starting to make more money, which is a good thing. So in the future, I would uh, expect the factory to be in a bigger location and have, uh, you know, we'll be able to take on a lot more clients and a lot more higher clients than what we're able to take on right now, which is kind of what we're setting up for. And then <clears throat> as far as like the media stuff and the interviews, I think my boy Banana Clip is going to be taking over kind of that type of stuff. And... Uh, I don't exactly know what he has in store, so I we'll have to kind of keep an eye out for that. But I do think that there's something in the works there. So make sure you guys keep your eye out for all of that stuff too. But uh, if you need merch, hit me up, because I'm your guy. Uh, so. Um, okay, so last question I have is, um, so we, like you said, we the beginning of the interview, you're from the north side of the room. Yeah, for sure. And I'm just being around here pretty frequently. I know you're with WPR, so yeah. what, what, what do you think makes her think we're special? Ah, uh, shit. It's like, well, one, we're a real hood, you know what I mean? Like, we, we're stamped for real. Uh, the food is amazing, you know what I mean? You can't get food. The north side food you can't get anywhere else in the city or anywhere else in Colorado. It's like, specifically to there. Um, and then we're like, it's everybody in the north side knows each other. They're all it's real close. It's a lot of family. Um, you know what I mean? That's why I love it. There's a lot of politics and BS that goes on over there too, but that I feel like that's what any neighborhood that you grow up in. But I'm proud of where I'm proud of where we came from. We've done a lot. Um, we get a lot of love, and shit, I wouldn't change it for the world. You know what I mean? So yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's about all the questions I had. Is there anything else you want to speak on? Nah, man, like I said, hit me for your merch. Keep an eye out for what Banana Clip has in store. Favorite by Rome's going to be doing a lot of pop-ups and things this summer. We're going to be switching the direction of how uh, things are going to be working over there. So we got a lot of surprises for you guys in store over there as well. And then, shit, if I drop some music, make sure y'all motherfucking stream it. <laughs>
There you go. There you go. Well, I appreciate your time. Appreciate you, Thank you.